Hemp extract kills melanoma cells. Australian scientists have shown in in vitro studies that hemp extract can slow down the growth rate of melanoma cells and increase the rate of their death. If the results can be replicated in human studies, it could open up a completely new avenue of skin cancer treatment. Australian scientists from Charles Darwin University CDU, and the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology RMIT, have demonstrated the promising anti-cancer effects of hemp extract, cannabis sativa. In in vitro tests, the extract inhibited the growth of melanoma cancer cells, a malignant tumor of melanocytes, commonly referred to as skin cancer. The extract not only slowed down the growth rate of melanoma cells, but also caused their faster death. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Cells. Scientists in their lab treated melanoma cells with a compound extracted from cannabis plants known as the cannabinoid PHEC-66. PHEC-66 was developed by MGC Pharmaceuticals of Australia. Last year, the company funded research that showed PHEC-66 stopped isolated melanoma cell lines from multiplying in the laboratory. Scientists from CDU and RMIR, encouraged by the promising results of previous studies, tested PHEC-66. Studies have shown that the compound binds to the receptors of cancer cells and controls their development in two key phases, damaging the cell in the process. This damage ultimately leads to her death. Whether this works in a living organism is a completely different matter that remains to be investigated. Damage to a melanoma cell prevents it from dividing into new cells and instead starts programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis, said Dr. Nazim Nasser from CDU, co-author of the publication. This is a growing area of important research as we need to better understand hemp extracts especially their potential to act as anti-cancer agents. If we know how they respond to cancer cells, especially when it comes to why these cells die, we can improve treatment techniques to be more specific, responsive and effective, he emphasized. Dr. Nasser specializes in cancer cell biology pharmacology, and drug delivery systems. He is co-author of several papers on the use of cannabinoids in the treatment of melanoma, the therapeutic potential of cannabinoids in prostate cancer, and a review of current melanoma treatment methods. PHEC-66 triggers apoptosis by inducing DNA fragmentation, inhibiting cell growth by division, and significantly elevating intracellular reactive oxygen species levels. Their high concentrations can cause damage to many different parts of the cell. In preparation for preclinical studies, the team now plans to focus on developing a targeted delivery system for PHEC-66 to melanoma cells. Such advanced delivery systems remain to be fully developed, underscoring the importance of continued efforts to ensure appropriate and effective use of these agents at target sites, NASA said. The researcher admitted that there is growing evidence of the potential of cannabis compounds in the treatment of various diseases, 
although in some countries these plants are socially stigmatized. These studies, as NASA points out, may revolutionize cancer treatment. Clinical uses of hemp extracts include the treatment of anxiety, cancer-related symptoms, epilepsy, and chronic pain. Intensive research into the potential to kill melanoma cells is just the beginning. We are also investigating how this knowledge can be applied to the treatment of various other types of cancer. The scientist emphasized, the new study was conducted only in vitro, in specially cultured melanoma cells, and not on humans or animals. Further research is necessary on the safety of this compound and its effectiveness in humans. The next stage involves animal studies or preclinical trials to confirm and further investigate the effectiveness of the PHEC-66 cannabinoid in the treatment of melanoma and other cancers, said Professor Nitin Mantri from RMIT, lead author of the study. I probe malfunction. NASA has identified the problem. The Voyager I probe has been sending an incomprehensible sequence of zeros and ones to Earth since November last year. NASA experts say they have identified the source of the problems preventing the correct transmission of data. They have some ideas on how to fix the probe but it's unclear whether they will produce the expected results. The Voyager I probe is already old. It was launched from Earth in 1977 and now some of its instruments no longer work. However, throughout the decades of space travel, they functioned properly and lived up to expectations. Voyager I flew through the solar system and breached the boundaries of the heliosphere, the protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields produced by our sun. At this boundary, the solar wind loses its speed, and the pressure of the galactic winds begins to outweigh the pressure of the solar wind. This boundary is approximately 18 billion kilometers from the sun. The Voyager I probe crossed the edge of the heliosphere and entered interstellar space in 2012. Currently, Voyager I is approximately 24 billion kilometers from Earth. The probe's mission helped expand our knowledge of the outer solar system. Its current location offers the opportunity to collect scientific data from interstellar space, but to do so, the probe must function properly. In December last year, NASA reported disruptions in communication between one of the onboard computers, called the Flight Data System FDS, and the subsystem used to communicate with Earth. The so-called Telemetry Modulation Unit TMU. The spacecraft receives and executes commands sent from Earth, however, the flight data system does not communicate properly with one of the spacecraft's subsystems, and as a result, no science or engineering data is sent back to Earth, NASA explained in a statement. The task of the FDS is, among other things, collecting data from scientific instruments and data on the condition and location of the probe. The system combines this information into one data packet that the TMU sends to Earth. The data is in the form of binary code. The problem is that the data reaching Earth is completely unreadable.
The repeated sequences of zeros and ones have been described by NASA specialists as digital gibberish. This gibberish has been reaching air traffic control since November 14 last year. The result is that for three months the mission managers have had no knowledge about the condition of the man-made ship furthest from Earth. The team does not have visibility into key parameters regarding the ship's propulsion, power and control systems. Experts argue that the problem lies in the FDS subsystem, which is one of the probe's three computers, cooperating with the central command and control computer and the system that supervises Voyager Eyes orientation in space. By the way, the current smartphones that everyone has in their pockets have much more computing power than these three computers combined. Unfortunately, we have not yet resolved the problem or recovered the telemetry data, Suzanne Dodd, Voyager project manager at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, told Ars Technica. Dodd became Voyager mission manager in 2010, overseeing a small cadre of engineers responsible for exploring interstellar space. Since November 14 last year, packets transmitted to Earth have contained a repeating pattern of zeros and ones, as if the data had become stuck. NASA engineers have spent much of the last three months trying to diagnose the cause of the problem and are almost certain it is FDS. The most likely explanation for the problem is memory corruption in the flight data system. But engineers lack detailed data because the spacecraft is transmitting digital gibberish. When the Voyager flight data subsystem was developed, it was an innovation in computing. Both probes were equipped with two FDS systems. However, Voyager Eyes backup FDS stopped working in 1981, after passing Jupiter and Saturn. At the time, most people at NASA believed that Voyager 1 had accomplished its task and completed its mission. Over the next few weeks, the team plans to send the spacecraft a command to switch to a different operating mode that the spacecraft used during its flyby of Jupiter and Saturn in 1979 and 1980. According to experts, this can show exactly which part of the memory has suffered the fault, which may provide a solution to the problem. The question is whether changing the operating mode will work. Because the last time such a solution was used was over 40 years ago. Distance is also a problem. One-way transport takes 22.5 hours. Therefore, you have to wait almost two days for feedback from the probe. The people who built this spaceship are no longer alive. We have a pretty good set of documentation, but most of it is in paper form. So to get the documents we do, archaeological digs, Dodd admitted. It would be a real miracle if we recovered Voyager I. But we haven't given up yet, she emphasized. The twin Voyager probes are currently the farthest spacecraft still operational. The New Horizons probe, which flew past Pluto in 2015, has a chance to join the study of interstellar space. The spacecraft is on track to reach interstellar space in the 2040s.